Hello everyone and welcome to this video of the series Python for Engineers on Introduction to Lists or in other words multi-dimensional data. So in this video we're going to talk about the definition of a data structure, we're going to talk about a list specifically as a data structure in Python, and then we're going to talk about how we define a Python object and what it means to be a mutable object and how list functions can be useful. Now let me start off by talking about what a data structure is. A data structure really is a collection of data values in any computer programming language that has a relationship among those values and also accompanies it a bunch of functions and operations that can be applied to this data. And one of the major data structures in Python is a list. And it's a very important data structure if you're planning to do any engineering type software with Python. So let's look at an example here of what a list really is. So a, a list is a mutable sequence of ordered collection of elements. The order in which the elements appear in a list is conserved in a list. And these items can be retrieved by accessing their index in a list. And a list is defined using square brackets. So let's look at an example here. So my first list here. So let's say I have a list of three different elements, right? That's how I define it. I have square brackets. I have the elements two, five and six separated by a comma uh, and I've written some code here to print out what this will do okay so I printed out my first list is two five and six and so you notice here that we have integers two five and six and the order is conserved so how do we know that let's try to see uh, uh, my you know my first list um, element zero right in Python Indexing starts from zero, not from one. So the first element would be the zeroth element, really, in, in a list. And let's look at the element at location two. So it's not necessarily the second element, right? That would be the third element. So if I print this out, I'll see that the first element in my list is the element at index zero, which corresponds to number two here. And the third element in my list corresponds to index number two, which is six. Okay, cool. So what about the plus operator, right? If we look at the plus operator on a, on a list, and the reason why I would bring this up out of all the other operators is because if you're with an engineering background, you probably think that um, from a vector point of view, if you've ever worked with vectors or multidimensional data, when you do a plus operator mathematically in linear algebra, um, you get a summation element by element. That's not really what happens uh, for a list in Python. So let's say we have this other list right and let's say this list has the element 1.2 uh, the element cow the element false and the element hello and five three uh yeah let's do three right and then we use the plus operator and we say uh the third list is my first list plus my second list. So what happens is the plus operator appends the second list to the first list, creating a third new list. So you can see from my first list I have 2, 5, and 6, and then I have from my second list 1.2, cow, false, hello, and 3. And one thing to note here, which is very, very important, is that a list doesn't really need to have the same kind of elements. So in here you can see I have a mix of integers, floats, strings, booleans, all in one list. And that's one of the great things about lists in Python. They're much more, um, I would say, much much less restrictive than other type of data structures in other languages like C++ or Java or anything like that. Okay, cool. So now we know what a list is. We know that things are... Um, have a certain order, elements have a certain order, we don't need a specific kind of element to be in a list. But I want to move a little bit to that word that I used in the beginning of the definition, which is mutable, and I want to talk about what a mutable object in Python is. Before I start that, I'm talking about what an object is. An object is an instance of a type. So a type really defines what a thing is, what kind of a thing is, right? So, and an object is when I create something of that type. So the statement that says A is equal to a list of apples, bananas, and oranges, I'm saying that A is an object that has a type list and has all these elements in it. And these elements are of type string. Now, A in Python 
is the variable that points to a specific memory location where this list exists. So in this graphic right here, you can see that A is a variable, points to a specific memory location on my computer, and says that it has apples, bananas, and oranges. This is the Python object. A mutable object allows you to change the values in it. So a list is a mutable object. And because it's mutable, I can do a0, which is at index 0, set that equal to berries. So now instead of apples, I replace that with berries. And you'll see that at the same memory location, A, I can see a different kind of list. That's what makes a list mutable, as opposed to immutable, which there are data types that are immutable, we'll talk about in other videos. So let's do a quick example on how to use a Python list to represent a, um, a vector that is the gravity vector on Mars. Say we have established a frame of x, y, z, x and y being tangential to the plane of the surface of Mars and z being downwards. Um, you can look up the value of gravity, um, the gravity acceleration on Mars is 3.711. So I can either define the list directly like this, or I could just do that, just to show you that, you know, I can define the list to be a list of zeros, no values, but then I can say, okay, Mars gravity at Z location or index two is equal to that. And if I run this, we can see that from the old print code that I have that, you know, the north direction, the east direction, X and Y, or, you know, zero and one, we have zero value of acceleration of gravity. And in the down direction, I have 3.711, right? Another example could be is that we could represent a list of lists and why would you want to do that in a lot of engineering applications we have um, data that's coming in from either a sensor or from some other location or wherever it could be but it could be timestamp data right it could be timestamp it doesn't need to be timestamp in this example we have some data coming in at some time so let's say we have a temperature sensor and this temperature sensor is sending out time in nanoseconds and then it's sending us the temperature at that time. So we have timestamp temperature data, right? So I can represent that with a list of lists. I have a temperatures, you know, temps underscore C is in Celsius. Let's start out with an empty list. And there's this nice functionality in Python called append for a list. And an append of a list, it takes whatever you're giving it and it puts it at the end of the list. So right now, we don't have anything in the list, it's just empty, I've defined it to be empty. And that's completely valid, an empty list is a completely valid thing. And now I want to append to it another list, which is going to be, I'm just going to copy and paste the time and the temperature here, right? So now, basically what I'm saying is, I want you to add to this list at the end, this value and now I'm going to add the other one which is a list that has another time and another temperature and oops and then I'm going to add the third one here that has another time and another temperature right so basically what I'm doing here is I'm saying that I have this temperature C which is a list that I want to store temperatures in as they come in and I'm getting all these temperature measurements with timestamps. So I'm creating another list and I'm putting it inside the list. Um, so again, the elements of a list don't need to be of a specific type. Now here I'm doing everything as a list of two elements for every element in the temperature li list, but they don't have to be that way. They could be anything else. I'm just trying to show you here that it's really, there's no limitation on what you can have. And there is a usefulness of having a list and appending to it because it's mutable. I can keep adding to it keep adding to that list over and over and over until I'm done adding my temperature measurements. So another thing to talk about here for a list are a set of functions that I find really, really useful to use with the list. Now, this is not the exhaustive list of functions that are defined within the list data structure. Feel free to Google that and look at them. But I feel like the insert, remove, and pop functions are really useful. Um, the insert function allows you to insert an element at a specific index into the list. And the remove function allows you to remove a specific element in the list if you know that that element exists. The pop function allows you to remove an element and it gives it back to you uh, at a specific index. So it doesn't just delete it and it goes away. No, you can get it back. And that could be useful if I wanted to get something out of the list, use it, but I don't no, no longer want it to be in the list. So I could just use it in one go and do that. So let's look at how we can use the these functions in, in a specified list. So let's say I have a list of one, two, three, 
um, hello and uh, 4.4 and 5.1. Right, that's my list. And let's say I want to insert something into my list. A list, and I want to say insert. Um, what do I want to insert? Let's say I insert at index 3. I index the value um, insert. So now you can see that the original list was 1, 2, 3, hello, 4.4, 5.1. And then at the element 0, 1, 2, 3, I inserted this insert, right? Um, so that's pretty handy. Also, we can use the remove functionality. A list, and I want to remove. Let me just remove what I just added, right? I want to remove the insert string from there. And it's gone. Um, so you can see here where you can, you know, add, insert whatever you want, and you can remove things out of the list however you want. The other thing that's also useful is the pop functionality, which in this case, let's say I want to get the last element from a list, right? So I say a list, and then I say dot pop. I have to give it an index uh, for it to give me that last element. And the index here, minus one, gives me the last element of a list. So let me go here and let me just comment out this code here so I can look at it. So look, the last element was 5.1, right? And now that element has disappeared from the list. So previously the list used to be 1, 2, 3, hello, 4.4, 5.1. I popped the last one, so I got it. I stored it in this last element variable, and I looked at the list and it's gone again, right? So let's look at the third element in the list. Now, same thing, I do a list.pop and index 2, right, that gives me the third element, which would be 0, 1, 2, the value of 3. So if I look at that, the third element is 3, and it's disappeared from the list. So you can see how these functionalities are useful, and, it, and also the append functionality that we talked about earlier, they can let you manipulate and change the list however you want. One last thing I want to mention about lists is that the ability to do what is referred to as slicing. The slicing operator in Python allows you on a list to operate and get a, a get a set of that list, not the whole thing. And that's useful if you want to get a little chunk out of the data, use it and do things with it. And the way you would do that is with this syntax where you have a specific list and you put square brackets next to it and you say I want you to start from here, stop at this index here and then step this much. The idea is that, okay, I want you to get me the values from index start to index stop. And I know if you want it to give you the all the values, then you leave the last step optional. It'll take all of them. Or if you want to step two elements or four elements in between, it'll make large jumps in between them. Uh, and here's just a quick example of showing you how this could be used. Say you have a list of 0, 1, 7, 4, 32, 47, 89, and 6. If you slice by saying I want 3 to 6, the start and stop, and then you get 0, 1, 2, 3, which is 4, 5, and 6. That's what you're going to get. It's going to step the, the same value. And if you say I want from 0 to 6 and step 2, it's going to go from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, all the way to here, but it's going to skip uh, all the, uh, it's going to skip one element in between. So it's going to do 0, 7, 32, etc. Uh, and if you do four, you know, start from four and end all the way, it'll start from the fourth element and go all the way down if you don't supply a stop. Uh, if you supply minus one and minus two, minus one like we saw earlier is the last element, minus two is a second to last element. So that's kind of the, nota the, the notation that's used in Python to index from the end of the list. Um, and if you say, you know, colon five, that means start from the beginning and go all the way to the fifth element. And you can actually skip the start and end, and you can say this tells you that you want all of it, right? Skip the start and end value, because typically you'll have something here like x and y, right? Some 0 or 5 or whatever. If you skip those, that means give me the entire list and jump uh, a step of 2 between them. Um, so there you have it. This is our talk about lists, and we talked about what a list is, how it works in memory, what I, why is it mutable, and all those concepts. Uh, I hope you find this video useful. If you do, please hit that thumbs up button and maybe subscribe to the channel. I would really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for more videos.